module is called the Vault of Iptiz. Uh, this is a complete adventure for a fifth level party designed to be played in a four to six hour single gaming session. Uh, so you can use it as a drop into your campaign or if you're seeing this far in the future and I've released all of my Aburian Blights campaign material, you can use it in that. Uh, but this is the first step. So after you've downloaded the PDF, pause and read it or read as we go along or do the opposite, whatever you prefer. But we're moving on to build the Vault of Iptiz. Here's a quick overview of the table with everything staged before the gaming session. Here's all the scenery that we'll need and then some, some black felt. And then uh, this is an insert that I made that fits perfectly into the box that my printer came in. And I've hot glued all these uh, dividers and together so that this insert holds the tiles and they're perfectly fitted. It's a nice way to keep organized. So let's pull up the module map and we will begin in room number one. The players enter from the spiral staircase into room one. Room one requires two dead ends, one corner, and one hallway. So we'll go to the rack and take those pieces out. Let's assemble room one and clip on the doors as shown in the map. Slumped over in the western corner is the body of a dead UNT who fell victim to the lightning trap on the door. Scorch marks on its arm could be discovered, perhaps giving the player's advantage on identifying the presence of that trap. We'll assume that the party decides to go through that door first, from room 1 into room 4. In the center of this chamber is a bizarre arcane looking device, which controls the behavior of a golden platform in the corner of the room. A cambion is here on that platform, trapped in a force cage. As you read about this room, if you start to experience deja vu, it's probably because you played Baldur's Gate 2. Anyway, the device can summon or banish a denizen of the Nine Hells, and also create or dispel the force cage. If the players haven't deciphered how to use it, then any attempt results in one of those four things happening randomly. The UNT expedition did that, and now one of them lies dead, a pool of blood still growing out from it. The Cambion provides a role-playing encounter opportunity. See the module appendix for some pointers. There's also a chest in this room which contains a Blade of the Braggart, a new magic item. Again, see the module appendix for details. We'll assume the party moves from room 4 into room 5. This room is notable for some racks of ancient potions, which seem to have long since broken, spoiled, and spilled onto the floor and collected in the middle of the room. This has either created a black pudding or a sod sleeper, which is a new monster. See the appendix for its stats. Also on one wall in black charcoal is a mural of arcane scrawlings. An investigation check will reveal one particular figure, a 4x4 grid, which will be important later on. This is spelled out in the module. There is also a secret door in the east wall. We'll assume the party finds the secret door and moves from room 5 into room 2. Room 2 is a long corridor notable because the floor, walls, and ceiling are of a perfectly smooth marble. There's a 30 foot long pool of acid 40 feet deep, cutting the hallway in two. At the location marked T is a very thick, durable, clear glass wall. If the players had entered from room 1 and attempted a long jump, it would have ended very badly for them. Because they entered this way, however, they are able to discover its presence very easily. At the north end is the evil portal from episode 14, heavily trapped. Now let's assume the players double back all the way to room 1 and enter room 3. This is Iptiz Library. At the location marked W 
is a gear and wheel sort of device. Turning it causes all of the acid from room 2 to be pumped into the lower portion of room 6. This cannot be undone. There are some interesting things to be found in the bookshelves via an investigation check. Two yuan ti are here rummaging about. They used to be four, but lost two, as described earlier. They are generally hostile to the party. Room 6 has a lot going on. The floor is 10 feet below, basically making the entire room a giant pit. The pit is either filled with heaps of bones that animate and attack as soon as anyone steps on location T, or it is filled with acid from room 2, which has dissolved the bones and as a result become imbued with evil energies. In this case, pseudopods reach from the surface of the green liquid and attack relentlessly. A narrow suspended walkway at normal elevation chases the perimeter of the room. Also at normal elevation is a 10-foot platform on the west wall, which has a statue of an orc posed in mid-bow shot. Actually, this is Gugzug, a petrified war chief kept by Iptiz as a trophy. A green crystal hemisphere protrudes from the east wall, near location T, and touching it will instantly end the petrification, allowing for a role-playing encounter a battle, or both. Behind Gugzug is a well-hidden secret door, which leads to a small alcove that contains mounds of fake treasure. This is the decoy vault. On the far wall of this alcove is a lever, with a plaque mounted below it that says, Push me! If the party pushes or pulls the lever, the same thing happens. The floor gives way, and everything in the room falls down a curved chute into the bottom of room 6. However, if they push the plaque itself, as instructed, the secret door from room 6 to room 9 unlocks and swings open. Moving along into room 7. This appears to be a totally bare chamber, but the floor is actually 16 pressure plates, each 5 foot square. The drawing from room 5 indicates which four plates must be depressed. If those four are depressed while the others are not, all the plates lock into place, there's a loud clicking sound, and the north door in room 2 becomes clear and harmless for one day, permitting access to room 10. The party doubles all the way back and makes their way to room 10. Here, Iptiz awaits. A heap of bones in the middle of the chamber animates and becomes the bone naga itself within one round as soon as anyone steps beyond the door. Role-playing tips for this encounter are provided in the appendix of the module. Behind it is a large basin of water housing a water elemental under Iptiz's control. Notice that for the south side of this room, there was already a wall there. So you could use a field tile or a single wall tile. It doesn't matter. This is one of the advantages of the 1.25 inch grid system. To the west side of the room is a forge containing some jade fragments and some racks with the tarp haphazardly thrown over them. Inside the tarp is a yellow mold. Finally, the party makes it to room 9, the vault itself.
On the two opposing walls are the display shrines from episode 11. One displays a necromancer's tome with several spell scrolls. And the other holds a lumen filter, which is a new magic item. See the module appendix. In the center of the room, upon an ornate pedestal, is a beacon of saloon. Or if you're dropping this into your campaign, whatever the party was chasing is found here. So that's the Vault of Iptiz. I hope you and your table enjoy it. And this is also the end of Season 1 for Wylock's Crafting Vids. What does that mean? Well, it means that I need a little break. Uh, I've been going at breakneck speed, and doing these weekly has, uh, has caused other areas of my life to need attention. So that's what I'm going to do for a little while. Uh, honestly, I'm a little burned out on crafting too. I'd like to do it for fun for a little bit. Um, so what makes a season? Mm, nothing in particular. When I started the channel, I had no idea I would even do the season concept. Um, but each, uh, each corresponding video supplement to a free module, I intend to do that like we've just done at the end of every season. So that'll be a nice, big, epic bookend to each season. Uh, each season will probably last three months like this one did. I feel like that's a good amount of time. As far as the distance in between seasons, I don't know. Uh, I could post this video and suddenly feel rejuvenated and decide I'm going to post the next video next week, but it could be a couple months too. I know that's vague, so I will make this commitment to you. Season 1, Episode 2, which is Episode 18. The next episode will air prior to October 1st, 2015. Again, it could happen tomorrow, but... That will be the absolute latest that I will be back. So don't unsubscribe, stick around, keep spreading the word. I'm Wylock. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in a couple months.